Hey everyone, Pugs here with one new review for y'all. Yeah, that's right. We're doing things a little bit different today because today's episode is Christmas Who, which is the very first special, very first double length episode of this show. And since I organized my reviews based on 22 minute episode blocks, this review is going to spend all its time on this one episode. So I will, of course, try to use this time to talk about the episode in detail and, you know, to justify uh, making this review just one uh, episode. So, as always, I will go ahead and extend a quick thank you to everyone who's been watching, liking, commenting. Y'all know the drill by now. Y'all know I say this every time. That's just how it is. And with all that out of the way, let's just get right into this uh, very holiday spirit, wholesome, warm uh, episode review. Wow, with so much stuff to cover, I'm not even sure where to begin. Um, I guess I'll start with the general stuff. So Christmas Who is such an excellent, excellent Christmas special. And I'd say it's probably my favorite one in the show, although It's a SpongeBob Christmas is definitely up there too. And, you know, being a Christmas special, this episode is heavy on the life lesson, moral type stuff. And I think that works just fine for this episode. Not that Squidward is necessarily relatable to children in this, in this instance, but I like to see this episode as more of a cautionary tale for any party pooper across any category, not just people who don't partake in, in the Christmas spirit, given how problematic that would be. Uh, um, and because this episode review is basically going to be extremely positive, I'll go ahead and say the one thing I don't like about this episode. See... I don't really like that Sandy just kind of disappears here. Like, she's there to set up the episode, and then we, like, never see her again. And I don't like that. For one thing, it's jarring. It would have been a big help if there was even just, like, a throwaway line about her having, like, gone back to Texas or something. And then the other reason I don't like it is because this isn't an isolated incident. You know, they do this kind of stuff with Sandy all the time. Maybe not the abruptly cutting her out of an episode type of stuff, but just with, like, not including her, period. Like, first off, this show has an ensemble cast, so I would very much like to see all of the ensemble cast, please. But more than that, Sandy is one of the big five characters. She really should be included more in specials like these. Christmas Who is far from the last episode to pull something like this. I actually just got finished reviewing Truth or Square in my written reviews, and that episode does it worse, but it's just a trend that is very much rooted in misogyny. I don't even have to sugarcoat it, and that's that on that. Um, but that's enough bad. That's the only bad thing, really. So let's just talk about the good, because that's basically everything else in this episode. If you've read any of my written reviews for specials like these, um, y'all know I like to separate out the animated segments and the live-action ones, so... I'll just be starting off this part of the review by discussing the very first appearance of Patchy and Potty. Um, what an introduction this is for these two characters. I really enjoy Patchy's part of the episode, which isn't a surprise because I always love seeing Patchy. Um, I really like that the show keeps him just for the specials, and even then doesn't spend too much time with him. Uh, Patchy and Potty are such a great dynamic duo, and they don't even feel out of place at all, even though, you know, they're live action, and this is, of course, a cartoon show. Uh, I think a lot of effort was put into making the live action segments like this as cartoony as possible, which makes them blend in with the rest of the episode. And it also just gives them a certain style that's just really fun to watch and really makes them stand out. And the low budgetness of it all is also something that I adore. And there's just a lot of charm in the patchy segments, is what I think I'm trying to say. Uh, they're funny, and they're a great addition to specials like these, and I just, I love them a lot. They're also just very nostalgic, but I think they're also made like that, especially in this episode, where it's, like, supposed to feel like a nostalgic Christmas special from the get-go. Um, so, now to switch gears and talk about the animated part of this episode, I first want to say that I just adore the atmosphere of Christmas Who!, um, I mean, we got all the nice backgrounds from the scene at night with all the Christmas lights to during the day with the melted snow and then the music in this episode. Oh my god, it's so good. Like, I love all of the Spongebobified or I guess Hawaiianified steel guitar 
steel guitarified, I don't, I don't know, uh, versions of Christmas music that we see in this episode, like, especially, like, the Jingles Bells version, like, I love that so much, um, that's a staple on my Christmas playlist, by the way, and really the background music of this episode went off, like, Comic-Con B with the bells is just brilliant, and then we have the iconic, uh, Very First Christmas, which is just a great, great song, you know, all in all, this episode just really gets you in the Christmas spirit from atmosphere alone. And another great thing about this episode is just how dang wholesome it is in both big and small ways. There's, of course, the obvious choices of SpongeBob's enthusiasm over spreading Christmas cheer and like the ending of the episode or the last third of it, which I'll talk about later. But I also love that the whole town got in on Christmas too, even if it was just because they wanted stuff. Like it once again makes Bikini Bottom feel like a real interactive environment and not just like a barely relevant backdrop and it fleshes out the world of Spongebob Squarepants like that much more. And I also really like the scene where Spongebob tells Mr. Krads, Patrick, and Squidward about Christmas. Like I've said before, I love touches like this where everyone is like hanging out, especially in the Krusty Krab, because it helps make uh, Mr. Krabs seem more like the gang. And it develops the relationship between Patrick and Mr. Krabs some more, even if they don't really like talk to each other in this scene. You know, it's just in the background, it's in the background details, okay? That's all I have to say. And the last big thing I'll talk about for this episode is, of course, the emotional crux of it all, which is the main story, particularly like the second half of it, or like I said, the last third. Um, Squidward is, of course, a jerkwad in this episode. I mean, so much that they sneak in a joke that's basically calling him a jackass, but like, that's the whole point. Uh, This is a Christmas special. They've got to lean into the wholesome and the jerk with a heart of gold moments, because what else are these specials for? Uh, (laughs) And the scene where Squidward opens Spongebob's heartfelt gift and then realizes that he's been a huge jerk is a great emotional moment for this special. And I really appreciate that there were real emotional stakes and investment here. Um, The longer length of this episode means that more plot-driven and character-exploring storytelling can be done, which makes this episode stand out compared to uh, SpongeBob SquarePants' usual fare. And, of course, this emotion is balanced out with both comedy and cuteness, the comedy, of course, being in when uh, Squidward dressed up as Santa for sweet SpongeBob, uh, eating shit as he does. Um, and this whole scene is sweet anyway. Like the fact that Squidward did all of that, gave away all of his stuff just to cheer up SpongeBob. Like it's just very cathartic and wholesome to see this. And I love that we see this miserable grump do something so very selfless for a change, establishing that he does truly care for Spongebob, as we'd already seen in episodes like Pizza Delivery and Dying for Pie. And I also really, really adore the bit right before the very ending of this animated bit, where Spongebob like excitedly goes to tell Squidward that Santa came after all. Like, he is so, oh my god, he is so adorable here. Like, it legitimately makes me want to cry. Like, the way his arms are just like flapping up and down. Oh my god, I'm sorry. It's just literally, I feel like my heart's going to explode. Like, he is so adorable in this moment. Um, And, you know, it just ends the episode on such a sweet note, which is then enhanced with the humor that is, like, the real Santa, who laughs like a uh, crazy person. Uh, Yeah. So, you know, I think that just about covers everything, right? Like, I think my throat's getting tired, at least. Um, I just love talking about Spongebob. What can I say? But, you know, to get back on topic, uh, clearly I've got no problems with Christmas Who, like, at all. Uh, other than the missed opportunities with Sandy, which does knock the episode down a little bit. But I do get that the episode did have time constraints, so, like, I do forgive that decision a little bit. I just do wish that they could have just put in, like, a throwaway line. But I suppose I could understand it. Um, And, you know, of course, even if this does knock the episode down a little bit, it doesn't stop it from being put in my amazing tier, where it comes in with a score of 9 out of 10. As always, I just wanted to end with some closing thoughts of mine. Um, well, first off, what y'all think of my little graphics? Aren't these so cute? Found this little Gary online. Oh my god. Okay, sorry, just had to say that first. But, you know, to really, like, actually talk about the episode. Um, you know, Christmas Who is the first episode for a lot of things. You know, it's the first special. It's the first double-legged episode. It's the first episode to use Patchy and Potty. Um, you know... 
I feel like the existence of this episode also just like marks something special for the show. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of us think of like the movie as like the real mark of the show having gotten super popular, you know, like it got a theatrical release. And I think that is still, you know, the mark. But I think the fact that this show even got a double length special episode in the first place is a mark of something of investment, I suppose, in this show of saying, okay, you guys can have this large blocked out time slot. You know, having a Christmas special means that they will put you in like some kind of prime time, I would assume. So, you know, I feel like this means something for the show at the time that not a lot of people talk about. But, you know, I could be talking out of my ass here. I want to know. I don't know anything about production, but I just feel that way. And I think this is the only special of this season. It's the only one I could think of off the top of my head because I'm thinking of other like pre-movie specials and I feel like they're all in season three. So this might be the only one, but again, could be wrong because I can't think of every single episode right now. But yeah, so I think that's everything I have to say on Christmas Who. And we'll be back to, you know, regularly scheduled two reviews um, next time. I just, it was easier to do this as like one separate episode than rather do like three episodes at once. That would have been difficult. So yeah, so I'll just go ahead and close out things here and I will see you guys in the next review.